Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. Hello and welcome to ET Markets Crypto q and I'm Aloni Bhatt. Today we have Parth Chaturvedi, Lead Crypto Ecosystem at Coinswitch Kuber, who will respond to all your questions. Now, Parth is a crypto native since 2018, and before his role at Coinswitch, he was a management associate at Falconex, which is a digital asset trading platform headquartered in the US. This is Parth. Uh, I am uh, the crypto ecosystem lead for Coinswitch Kuber. Uh, we are doing a session on, um, you know, basic topics on blockchain, crypto and Web3. Uh, I uh, come from traditional finance. I used to work with uh, JP Morgan, uh, but uh, towards the latter part of my career, I made the switch towards uh, blockchain and crypto. I've been in the space for about four years now, uh, was in Onyx, which was uh, JP Morgan's blockchain unit. Uh, where I worked on uh, interesting projects like JPM Coin and Link. After that, I uh, dived down into like you know a full time crypto role at uh, one of the leading institutional trading platforms, Falcon X, uh, where I was part of the markets and trading team, executing the large OTC trades for clients. Uh, fairly recently, I've joined as the crypto ecosystem lead for CoinSwitch. Um, in today's topic, uh, we are going to be discussing uh, Web three and uh, why does it matter so much uh, so first questions around what is web3 web3 is basically a natural progression from web2 and it makes the internet more decentralized and free from the control of uh, tech giants platforms so web3 is basically a combination of uh, blockchain technology artificial intelligence machine learning with a basic intent of changing the fundamentals of the internet while keeping the user experience and you know the UI similar to what Web 2.0 has to offer. So a lot of people ask like, does Web 3 exist today? Uh, yes, it does. It is a concept of decentralization that has already found like, you know, a lot of support in today's world. Um, however, we must like clarify this is, this is in very early stages right now. Um, the internet is somewhere like, you know, in the uh, transition phase from Web 2 to Web 3. So there are a lot of companies which are also referred to as Web 2.5 companies. Um, the related to this is a question as, is Web 3 a new concept? So the concept of Web 3 is not uh, so new. It was, uh, you know, in fact, it predates the dot-com uh, bubble era of the 2000s, where, uh, you know, uh, there was excessive speculation in internet-related, uh, you know, stocks. Uh, at that time, there was a concept known as semantic web which is very similar to Web3. Uh, what is semantic web? Semantic web can be understood as an extension of the Web3 concept. It basically like, you know, uh, considers the web to have like a, a thinking mind of its own. So it is a mesh of, you know, large amounts of data that it associated with machines to read and understand uh, that data without the requirement of, uh, you know, human intervention. So consider the semantic web as a data representation in the form of a globally linked database where the data is stored, collected, retrieved by machines as and when it's required. So it, overall, it reduces the amount of human effort needed to sort through this, uh, you, know, un, you know, irrelevant or, you know, noise data that is often referred to as. So overall, like semantic web as a concept uh, seems to be like, you know, very utopian where basically the internet gets to decide how it wants to feed data to different connected devices. Um, I think we've gone a lot about, uh, like, you know, Web3 and how it is constructed, but we should uh, take a step back and try to understand, you know, the evolution of the internet from Web1 uh, to Web2 and Web3. Uh, on a very basic level, I want to just highlight, you know, uh, that Basically, what happens in terms of differences, Web 1 was the information economy, where a lot of uh, information, it was a one-way communication where information was uploaded onto the internet. And, you know, not a lot, a lot of user interaction was possible. Uh, then came out Web 2, where uh, user interaction took center stage, but at the cost of uh, centralization. 
So Web two is also referred to as the platform economy, where huge platforms were created like Facebook um, and the sorts, where basically you know users uh, uh, had the option of posting as well as you know replying to so other posts, but on a centralized platform. Uh, Web three is being referred to as the ownership economy, where basically the uh, content creator or you know the publisher will have a, a complete freedom in terms of how that content engages with other people so basically uh, deplatforming uh, the internet and uh, you know sort of uh, going decentralized in the future so again like i'll take a step back and also in terms of historically try to you know uh, clear out the differences between web 1 2 and 3 Web one began uh, in 1990 and was almost uh, there post the uh, uh, dot com bubble burst era of 2004 5. It was the uh, as mentioned before, like it was basically a network of connected devices where which offered like a one way communication, such as reading content, sending emails. Uh, it was also referred to as static web. Where you know uh, basically the internet stayed the same for a while, and then you know uh, publishers uh, usually used to go and update the websites. So consider it like uh, you know all content creators are mainly large web publishers who used to provide contact and information in a graphic static page, and this was you know updated once like every month or so, and you could like look out for new content there. Uh, next, we moved on to Web two, which was like the era from two thousand five to the current era, where the dynamics of the internet changed and it became like you know more interactive and responsive. Uh, it paved the way for social media platforms to grow, which where the focus was on user generated content and allowing of two way communication. This period saw the rise of you know several platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. and made like you know content creators uh, made regular people into content creators and share it with the rest of the world or like people on the platform so web2 definitely had its own set of advantages that it brought like so many users on board and helped launch so many digital services however the data the content the traffic was controlled by a small group of technological giants uh, this creates a lot of privacy security censorship issues and restricts the free movement of information on the internet thus like you know somehow undermining the true concept of a free worldwide web uh, that is where web3 comes in and uh, must highlight here like you know blockchain technology is crucial for making web3 uh, you know enable web3 and uh, the next question is sort of you know related to that is web3 only related to blockchain technology the correct answer to that is no but is blockchain blockchain technology integral for web3 to develop the answer to that is yes uh it basically blockchain solves for the problem of uh, you know decentralization and the digitization of trust so in any transaction where a middleman is required blockchain makes sure that uh, you know uh, that uh, sort of trust gets digitized and there is no need for that middleman in the future but uh, there are multiple moving parts in web3 it is not just you know uh, going to uh, be possible by using blockchain technology only it it also has parts of you know uh, human intelligence human like intelligence basically ai and machine learning to it for uh, instance uh, you know uh, it is possible that ai and machine learning technologies will enable the internet to analyze data per specific user needs so in terms of building the entire uh, you know utopian semantic web uh, not just blockchain technology but uh, ai and machine learning will also help it so uh, what are some of the key features that differentiate uh, web3 from web2 uh, primarily the first one that we need to consider is ubiquity ubiquity means the ability to be present at multiple places at the same time Web two has that property where you share a picture on one social media platform becomes available at different other places. However, Web three takes it to like you know a step further where the internet is available to anywhere, anywhere at any time, and accessible accessibility to that uh, you know content will not be uh, limited by the platform usage. So uh, even if you are not on Facebook or like any other platform, you will be able to access content depending on the creators. Uh, 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 you know uh, settings for that particular uh, again like we go back to the concept of semantic web and how you know that 
uh, will play out uh, in the longer term on how Web three as a concept develops. Like you know, a more intel intelligent internet that sort of you know identifies uh, different user generated content, not just on the semantics, but on how uh, and what the user is trying to portray. So for that, a lot of machine learning and AI uh, you know technologies will be uh, used for. Why AI is extremely important for Web three is that it uh, basically plays an essential role in making the internet trustless and more intelligent. Uh, as I mentioned, like blockchain itself is an enabler of uh, you know uh, digitizing trust, but uh, coupled with AI, it can have like you know very uh, uh, distinguished uh, capabilities of uh, you know uh, filtering out the fake from genuine reviews or you know uh, ratings that are posted by bots. Uh, and things like that. So AI in Web three will also enable blogs, other online platforms to deliver user specific content and unbiased data. Uh, finally, one important theme that we'll see emerge in the Web three world is around uh, you know three D graphics and spatial web, where basically your experiences will become more immersive, and uh, sort of you know this is going to be the entry point for most people into the metaverse. A related question that we often get asked is uh, how are Web three and uh, cryptocurrencies related? So, cryptocurrencies and blo blockchain are going to be the building blocks for Web three. Um, why I say this is that because cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, keep uh, the Web three ecosystem decentralized and will ensure that stakeholders have uh, proper incentives. Um, you should know that uh, in the incentive framework it, it becomes like the key for you know web3 content uh, providers i'll give you an example so there is a token called bat uh, which is uh, the short form for basic attention token it's created a blockchain based platform on ethereum uh, sort of like a digital advertising marketplace where users are rewarded for the attention that they give to a particular piece of content creators get paid for making that content and advertisers get to see like as to what content is being consumed by which consumer and everything is you know transparent uh, in terms of pricing and everybody is incentivized using that bat token the basic attention token uh, similarly there's another pro, uh, platform called live pure uh, the token here is lpt it is a decentralized video streaming uh, service provider and uses that lpt token to incentivize peers to keep the services on the network cost effective and secure uh, further along, like you must have heard of examples of metaverse tokens uh, like Sand and uh, Mana. Uh, so Sand is the coin used on the Sandbox, Sandbox project and Mana is the coin used on Decentraland. Uh, both of these are metaverses and use these tokens to you know, incentivize uh, land sales, digital land sales, NFT purchases or any other build that you have to do in those metaverses. Uh, so, I have some examples that I've already given to you, but uh, more specifically, if I had to, you know, uh, cover certain industries which Web3 applications will be useful for, uh, I would like to highlight, you know, music and video streaming industries as the primary ones uh, which are going to be up for disruption. Uh, so the global online music industry is already like a multi billion dollar industry and is supposed to reach 25 billion by 2027. Despite it being growing, uh, you know, so much artists and songwriters and music composers, they don't really get like, you know, their fair share uh, of uh, revenue while labels and, you know, streaming uh, platforms, they pocket a majority uh, portion of the revenues. For in instance, like artists are paid as little as 13% of the income generated uh, in the UK uh, music industry. This is where Web3 can make a difference. Web3 can put artists and viewers and listeners in the center stage while it will eliminate all uh, intermediaries as such. Um, similar to this, like another industry that we can probably like uh, expect Web3 to uh, upend would be uh, web search engines. So right now, if you need any information, you generally go to Google and uh, agree that Google plays a very important part in our day-to-day -day lives and provides us the content. The problem is that the search results are biased or they're skewed based on the search engine platforms, you know, analysis of you as a consumer. Um, what is going to happen with Web3, we'll have like more, uh, uh, you know, non-biased results. There are like, you know, some uh, examples already in the space like Wolfram Alpha, uh, which basically, uh, you know, 
give you a factual uh, uh, return for your uh, uh, query rather than a more uh, you know customized sort of a return basis on how you are as a user for me. Um, the third main industry that we're going to see like a lot of uh, you know changes with Web3 is uh, social networking. Uh, so right now you have like platforms where you know you provide content and you can interact with other people. And you can also make money out of it, but a major chunk of that uh, revenue stream is kept by the platform as fees. But with Web3, uh, you will become you know, more powerful in terms of a content creator. And the whole process from publishing to receiving incentive, incentives will be decentralized and more aligned for the you know, creator. So in terms of social media platforms, there are questions like, are there any such social media platforms already in existence in Web3? The answer is yes. Uh, primarily, I want to highlight like three of them. One is Sapien. It's an Ethereum-based social media platform for content creators that helps them, uh, you know, build an audience and monetize content. Uh, similar to that, there is another uh, project called Steemit, which is a blogging platform. Again, blockchain-based, helps users earn cryptocurrency for publishing and curating. Uh, another one which is not very popular is, uh, but like has like a lot of following is uh, Stoner Cats. A, which helps like you know animators and video creators to tokenize their work in the form of nfts and then lets uh, users buy and uh, sell those nfts as content uh, i've talked a lot about you know all these different kind of uh, um, projects and industries that will uh, be affected by web3 but what are some of the tokens in the space there are uh, a couple that i highlighted in the beginning like uh, basic attention token which is that uh, that helps you, you know, monetize the attention of uh, users. Then there is a LPT, which I mentioned, the, uh, you know, uh, streaming services, the video streaming services that were decentralized by the LPT Lyft Peer token. A couple of other infrastructure uh, tokens in Web3 space are pretty important, like Filecoin. Uh, it is basically a Web3 token with a platform that provides a solution for decentralized file storage. Uh, so in the future, if you don't want your content to be kept in one particular server, you can use the Filecoin, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure to uh, decentralize that storage uh, forever. Basically, another example is Polkadot. The token here is DOT Dot. It's an open source interoperability platform that facilitates cross-chain transfer. So it not only has a token, but it also has like gives you access to other kind of assets. Um, it will form like a very important uh, infrastructure layer in Web3. And uh, finally, I would like to end this session by you know highlighting the benefits of Web3 once more. Uh, the primary uh, benefit is of the decentralized web. There is no single point of uh, you know control censorship. At present, we know that the internet is highly uh, monopolized by a few tech giants. This is what Web3 solves for. Uh, second thing that Web3 solves for is building the true creator's economy content creation can directly finally be directly connected with the consumers in a more uh, you know cre uh, free uh, profitable as well as you know censorship uh, resistant form um, censorship resistance again is like a a very important point considering what uh, we've seen in the recent past and how uh, some of the fake news that has been generated uh, and uh, propagated by some of these platforms as well. And finally, there is enhanced security that uh, Web3 brings with it, surely from the fact that it's not uh, it's not centralized, so it avoids any single point of failure for the entire system. Uh, that's about it on how Web3 is going to uh, you know change our uh, basic uh, interactions with the internet. Uh, Hoping that you you found this uh, session useful. Thank you. Well, that's it from us. Hope this was all informative. Now do write into us at ET Markets Crypto Corner with all your thoughts and questions. From all of us, goodbye. <laughs>